All right, hello, Chatsu here, and welcome back to Steam Cleaning. Today we're playing a game called uh, Case of Distrust, which for some reason ha does not have audio settings whatsoever. So I can't turn down the music, I had to turn it down in OBS, and I don't even know if I... Hell, I don't even think I did turn it down good enough. Give me a second. Because that looks loud. All right. What's that one? Oh, well, let's see how that works out. Resume. I tried to start and then... Ugh. I'm going to this. Cross me were his piercing amber eyes. They surprised me at first, but I should have known he'd be there. I stretched and said, mid-yawn, not very nice to sneak into a sleeping woman's apartment, but his stare just continued. F it, let's play along. I left at his gaze. Uh, or I left at his glare, excuse me. I'd seen friends could you shoot thugs, hardened cops, and deadly politicians, but none could even match that gaze. I knew I didn't have what he wanted. Reaching into my coat, I took out my knife and flicked it open. I held the knife steady. I was staring back at him. Look, I said, nodding towards the desk. That's all there is. Take it or leave it. But a detective knows when she'd beat, and I knew then he wanted to search the place, and that's what he would do. I sighed, no weakness for his type. All right, I said, let's look. That a gleeful meat in victory. Oh. <laughs> I cut a yeah, piece of my apple that the cat had rejected. I was a sore winner. I jabbed, but I was smiling too because I was telling the truth. There was absolutely no other food in my apartment. Cat often dropped by to scavenge. He made a lot of noise when he thought I was holding out on him. But right now, the place was clean, empty, no food anywhere. I had to prove it to him. I don't know who Lewis is, but let's see. That's more often than I wanted. I was lousy at handling emotions behind his thoughts. I'd taken copies of old murder cases from the San Francisco PD records and I'd left. I loved reading through them even though my own contributions were minimal. At that time, I longed for those types of jobs. The truth was, any work was hard to find for a female detective. My old notebook now filled with to, to the brim. I wrote everything down. Minor details. Never know what can be useful. First half of my old case. Details from the beat I used to walk in my policewoman days, of course. I should have been from going on patrol, but Lewis also overlooked that role. Regular white ice box, tingle on yellow with age. Half black half block to the kitchen doorway. I think I'm rarely kept much stuck in it. Right now it was empty. Notes, case summary. Huh. Newspaper, blah, the newspaper was flopped on the floor. It's headlines about death of Lenin, leader of the Red Menace sweeping across Russia. It seemed the Bolsheviks had lost their heads. Okay, gives me a solid timeline here. Package cigarettes were the latest trend, but I still prefer to roll my own. The ashtray was evidence that it was a practice skill. I suppose I had a lot of free time back then. That is the Maltese Falcon. I kept a small statue underneath the uh, side table. It had been police evidence in a crime, and its owner hadn't wanted it back. I could shine to it. 
so I snagged it for myself on the way out of the department. Through the outside world, if I left now, the cat would start wailing so loud. Any complaints from the neighbors? Convincing before I left. Okay. Is that good enough for you? Cat yeah, was not in my apartment a few years earlier. He kept coming back. Though there was rarely a morsel to eat, he continued his loud meowing until I proved to him the place was empty of food. Didn't matter how dull you are, cutie pie, we've got no food around, I told him. It just chopped and looked at me. Apparently, he still didn't believe that. I needed to contradict him somehow to show him something in the apartment that would prove it was empty of food. What am I doing? You sure there's no food? I assume that I'm now response. Well, alright. So I had show him there's no food. I'm empty. Alright, I open the ice box. Okay. I open the ice box. There's a cat inside. Empty, I told him. <laughs> Quizzingly at the open door in the back of me. Sorry, fellow, there's no grub in there for me either. He stared at me, his eyes as disappointed as I felt. Those big yellows always got to my soul. Thoughts of my family filled my head. I fit. Sister Muriel had sent a letter with an update about her life in Chicago. She and her husband had just purchased a new home outside the bluster of the city. Their three young children were looking forward to the move. I never told Muriel, but those letters... <laughs> F it. Those others kept me going. Hearing about the family, however remote, helped me cope with the isolation I was feeling. I refused to accept it myself back then, perhaps. Mario had known anyway. My sister is the only in my life. I rejected. I wanted to change the world. To bring justice for victims, especially the ones who no longer had a voice. Not that I was helping advance my case with those types of cases coming my way. My mind spiraled into the usual series of questions. Had I even, imp had I even impacted the women's movement? Had I made any change in society at all? Or on society at all? Was my plotting career worth losing traditional happiness? What was the point in the life that I had chosen? Allowed me out from the cat, snapped my thoughts back into the moment. I took a deep breath and grinned back at him. Guess you can scream now, I said. Nobody's going to come knocking with food for you, fella. There immediately came a banging on the front door. Beyond a nuisance. This cat was psycho, too. You order out, I asked him. Open the door. The doorway was the regrettable, regrettably bleh, familiar face of Connor Green. I looked past him. Peering left and right in the hallway, I heard a woman's heels marching down the carpeted stairs, but otherwise, the building was silent and empty. Eventually, Green had. You're evidently green to come alone. He stared at me through the doorway with a coy smile. Well, ain't you gonna invite me inside? I started closing the door. But he stuck out his foot to stop me. Hey now. He 
Chitted? Sighted? No, that's not how you spell it. Anyway. Um, foul way you treat a customer, Malone. So that was his angle. Hiring me as a detective. I wondered what a bootlegger would need with a private eye. But he answered without my prompt. I'll make this quick. I can't take this to the hog house or the pigs would laugh me out. And other dicks just don't, or just aren't as tempting. His grin widened. Sorry, it's getting harder and harder to read on a screen like this. Um. Thought this was going to be quick, I said. I started rolling a cigarette. I'm going to look away from the screen real quick. Just reading on something backlit for too long. Strains you. It wasn't quick, and I already rolled and lit. lighted a second smoke when green finally should be lit. Finally finished a story. I noted the important the important bits in my book. Okay, does this just continue like this? It started with a letter. It slipped under his door in a white envelope. Okay, so I figure it's just going to continue on like this and it's starting to hurt my eyes, so I'm just going to save and exit. Yeah, maybe pick that up at some other point, but um, and as far as trying this out, it's interesting little slightly choose your own adventure kind of thing going on there um but yeah i will see you in the next one this is chatsu signing out